Attack on Titan is many things. It's dark, it's action packed, it deals with real world issues, it deals with our innermost parts, it deals with freedom, slavery, love, hate, duty, heroes, devils, titans. The show is full of everything that makes a series great. The foreshadowing is top tier as things are always foreshadowed from the very start. Some are more obvious and others are less obvious. That is why so many fans of the series have begun to go on little easter egg hunts with Isayama Sensei to find every moment in the series that foreshadows something else, even if it is small and seemingly meaningless. Some of my favorite moments that foreshadow the future were the future Eren events that are present from even the first episode. And while I guess you could argue that these people could be anyone, one thing is certain. They look exactly like Eren. From the clothes he wears, to the way he stands and walks, to the fact that he shows up alone in strange times. This one guy watching the scouts return to Shiganshina even has the same haircut as Eren. I mean, come on. We already know that Isayama is into this type of thing. This means that even the smallest details that occur in the series have the heaviest meanings. So imagine our surprise when these meanings and events change in the anime. This leads to a common theory that perhaps Attack on Titan might not end the way we expect. Also, by the way, there will be spoilers for Attack on Titan's ending, obviously. If you don't want to be spoiled, this is your warning. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Additionally, we've noticed that some people seem to be getting automatically unsubscribed from the Amagi, so if you could double check that you are still indeed subscribed, it would mean a lot. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. This theory was one I originally had heard about, but never really looked into until recently. Now, the manga's ending received a mixed bag of nuts in regards to fan reaction. Some people like me expected this sort of ending and felt it was satisfactory enough to let slide. It was originally around this time that I first encountered this theory, and to be honest, I really just saw this theory as all the haters doped up on copium. I never paid it much mind. But recently, after re-watching the series to this point, I've decided to look a little deeper into what all this could mean, and now I'm actually convinced that this is an equal possibility to anything else. Most of this is thanks to Isayama's deep tying of threads and foreshadowing of everything in the smallest details. We could merely say that the anime studios that made Attack on Titan, Wit Studios, and MAPPA could have changed a few things to make it fit better, but if we take every small difference as intentional on the part of Isayama and the studios making the series, then we begin to see something new. But before we start talking about how the Attack on Titan series ending may change in the anime, let's begin to go into why it would make perfect sense if it did. As any fan who has seen Attack on Titan realizes that the founder, through the paths, is capable of traveling through time and space. There were like at least two episodes regarding Zeke and Eren moving through time. But what not many fans realize is that Attack on Titan actually contains a multiverse of different timelines and realities. And all of these timelines seem to revolve around Mikasa. So far, we have identified four different timelines through this. There is the original timeline, the manga timeline, the Lost Girls timeline, and the anime timeline. These four timelines we can confirm exist. In the original timeline, the moment occurs during the time when Eren and Mikasa meet up outside of the refugee camp before they party down. I'm sure everyone remembers when the Eldians were partying in the refugee camp. Well, what people don't realize is that this was a fork in the path. Mikasa Ackerman has often been associated with butterflies, and I'm sure we've all heard of the butterfly effect. This is the theory that any action, no matter how small, has a consequence somewhere in the world, and tends to be a commonly used device in regards to any time travel story. In most cases, this results in a branched off timeline that can occur just from a time traveler being present in the past. And this is somewhat how things work with Mikasa. In this alternate world, Eren is confused about what he should do. Should he really cause the rumbling and destroy the world? All of the innocent along with the evil? Eren is doubting himself at this time and is also doubting his motivations. And so he turns to Mikasa and asks her a simple question. What do you think about me? Mikasa in the original timeline confesses her love to Eren. In this dimension, after her confession, Eren gives up his hate and forgets about causing the rumbling. He and Mikasa run off with each other where Eren decides to spend the last four years of his life with Mikasa. He uses the attack titan to build them a house and the two live in peace until Eren reaches the end of his life. And as you all know, the titan shifters live with the curse of Emir. 
When Emir first took upon herself as the founding titan, she lived for 13 years until someone attempted to assassinate King Fritz. Compelled by her love for the man who had made her life hell, she jumps in the way and takes the spear for him, dying. A slave to the very last, a slave to love. In this way, Mikasa is also actually tied into this and into helping Emir find peace, which ends the power of the titans and its influence on the world. But anyway, Eren begins to die due to the power of the titans, and he sits down. There, he asks Mikasa to move on with her life, and Mikasa, despite everything, holds back her tears and tells him, I'll see you later, Eren. Now, this leads us directly into the new timeline, the manga timeline. Now, the reason why this is important is how the manga starts out. Immediately out of the gate, the manga and anime beginnings are different, and I'll explain that later. In the manga, Eren wakes up from sleep, sitting in front of a tree where Mikasa wakes him up. And you know what he sees? Looking through his eyes, we see Mikasa and she tells him, See you later, Eren. This is what Eren hears as he wakes up in the manga. The first thing Eren asks is why Mikasa grew out her hair. This is a direct reference to the fact that she kept her hair short in a bob during the time when the rumbling should have happened, and while she lived with Eren at their house. From here, the manga continues as it does in the main story. The manga timeline specifically notes the change, with Eren remembering Mikasa telling him that she would see him later. Not to mention, Mikasa herself knows at that point that she will see him again. Now, of course, one could chalk that up to Eastern beliefs in reincarnation, but as we know, Isayama does nothing without a reason, and the fact that this moment is referenced in the manga's start tells us that Mikasa knows that she will see him again. We also learn that Mikasa is the reason why these events happen. We move into Lost Girls. Now, Lost Girls is an Attack on Titan story that started out as a novel by Isayama and Hiroshi Seko, but also received a manga adaptation and an OVA. In this story, we're shown three different stories. One is about Annie Leonhardt, which sadly is irrelevant to this video, so I'll skip it, but it's still good, go read it. And one about Mikasa, which is the one we'll focus on. And then a third about both Annie and Mikasa talking about why they joined the military in the first place. Now, in Mikasa's story, it starts out at the time that Eren gets beaten by the bearded titan. At this time, she thinks Eren is dead, and so she seemingly travels to another dimension. The story takes place in a world where the human traffickers who had planned to take Mikasa are killed in the woods and eaten by wild dogs, and the warriors never attack Shiganshina, likely returning to Marley after Marcel is killed. Grisha and Eren visit the Ackerman family's home where it's revealed that his visits in the original timeline were because Mikasa's mother is pregnant with her second child, a baby boy. Mikasa begins to develop feelings for Eren as he continues to visit. It's then that Eren explains his dreams of becoming a scout. Slowly, as the visits become more frequent, Eren begins to appear more beat up and it's revealed that he is bullied for his heretical views, much like Armin was. Eventually, when Grisha leaves his hat behind, Mikasa's father sends her to deliver it to him in Shiganshina. While there, she's told by Eren that Armin's parents left behind an airplane, which he and Armin plan to use to leave the walls and discover what's on the other side. During this time, she witnesses Eren anger some people with his beliefs, and they brutally beat him. It's after this that Eren stops coming to Mikasa's home due to the recovery process. Mikasa begins to miss him, and Grisha states that her mother should come to Shiganshina to make sure everything goes well during her delivery. Mikasa is happy to be able to play with Eren again, but Carla tells her that he and Armin are off doing stuff. Mikasa eventually feels that she has forgotten what Eren looks like, and as she leaves, she's stopped by a man who hopes to prove that he can make even a little girl into a murderer. To get past him to see Eren again, she proves that she is willing to kill him, though it was just a trick and the man is unharmed. But things don't turn out well when Armin shows up in a panic and states that Eren took the plane out and crashed it into the wall and was killed. It's then that Mikasa reawakens, surrounded by two titans as one punches the other. As we're shown, these timelines are created whenever Eren has to die and Mikasa can't save him. In fact, when she wakes up from this, a voice in her head even tells her that she can't stop Eren from dying. And that leads us to the ending of the manga where Mikasa is forced to kill Eren with her own hands. This seems to please Emir, who herself was a slave to love and never had the courage to free herself. They bury Eren's head under their favorite tree and leave a small tombstone there to mark it. But in the end, Mikasa still wishes to see Eren again, and this results in what could possibly be a new timeline. In the Attack on Titan anime, it all starts at the beginning again. However, the beginning of the Attack on Titan anime is vastly different than the manga. Eren sees a horrid future. He doesn't see Mikasa as he had before. He doesn't ask her about her hair or hear her say, see you later. No, he sees titans roaming the walls, children's toys, and so much death. His head is laying in the grass beside that tree, and suddenly he wakes up crying, and Mikasa asks him why he's crying, to which Eren doesn't know. 
This signifies that Eren had just woke up from a different timeline, one different from the peaceful death he experienced in the manga. He wakes up from a terrifying, horrible nightmare. And this is why people believe that Attack on Titan's anime will have a different ending from the manga, because everyone believes that the manga's ending was actually the anime's ending. This can further be guessed when one listens closely to the lyrics of various songs, such as Call of Silence and Call Your Name. The song, Call Your Name, starts out by speaking of a girl who is grieving from the loss of her brother. Now of course, this normally wouldn't make sense for Mikasa, but if we realize that her mother might have been pregnant when she was killed, it does make a bit more sense, doesn't it? Though the part where it says, his picture on the wall reminds me. But it goes on to talk about how she brings him coffee with a smile, but this disaster robbed him of his dreams. He's crying, missing his lover, and he doesn't have the power on his side forever. The song then changes to Mikasa's view where she confesses her love to him and they build a new house, a place where they can be at peace. Sound familiar now? But that's not it. The song then references the rumbling with the next new set of lyrics coming up. We don't know what is wrong tonight. Everybody's got no place to hide. No one's left and there's one to go on. All I know is my life is gone. The song references both the original timeline and the manga. Or does it? It almost makes it sound like the rumbling succeeded. After all, there was no place to hide and now there's no one left to go on. The next song references Eren when it says, Don't you think of me enough? I've been burning my heart out. Got to face me to tell you that I will run because I'm reticent. Eren is always moving forward, but it makes sense that he would run because he is reticent. The Oxford Dictionary defines reticent as not revealing one's thoughts or feelings readily. This is about Eren, who had to hide his true feelings and push his friends away. Now, why does this mean that the anime might be different than the manga? Well, the next lyrics reference this. You will know you are reborn tonight. It must be rough, but I'll stay by your side. Even if my body's beat to the bones, I don't want to go through that ever again. This references that Eren and Mikasa are caught in this constant loop and that Eren continues to die, but Mikasa won't let him go. But then, everything remains the same for the most part, so how will things change? Well, I don't know. Most theories posit that Eren will inevitably be the father of Astoria's baby. The true father of her baby was never seen, and we were merely told who it might be by someone else. I've heard many say that Eren will possibly complete the rumbling and actually kill everyone on Earth. I would love to see a happy ending for the series through this, but I don't know if it will result in that. While it is entirely possible that the ending will change, it is so deep into it that it becomes hard to predict how it might change or if it will at all. And as a counter to this, it is possible that the next dimension, or the rebirth hinted at, is possibly another storyline added in. There is a story known as Attack on School Casts. In this story, Armin, Mikasa, and Eren are just regular high school students. Despite this, everyone maintains their personalities, even with Eren mentioning how boring life is, or how he would love for a cataclysm to occur that will ultimately endanger all of humanity, even if he has to start it himself. In this world, Imbia Fritz remains venerated as a godlike being, and in the end, shows Eren, Armin, and Mikasa leaving the movie theater where they had just watched the Attack on Titan series events in the form of a movie. It's then revealed that even in this timeline, Titans existed, but only in the past 100 years and were wiped out well before the start of the story. Eren simply wants to see a sequel to the story, with Armin fawning over the mysteries that hadn't been explained yet. It's funny because this almost hints that there could be a sequel to Attack on Titan in Isayama's head. And that makes sense because he did leave the ending open. Ironically, where Eren's head was buried under that tree, and in the manga's timeline, the world goes back to war again, with paradise being completely shattered by the war, and the tree that Eren's head was buried under transforming into a massive tree similar to where Ymir found the hallucigenia that granted her the power of the titans hinting that the young child, and I don't know, maybe his dog too, will become the next founding titan, and return the world back to the age of Eren's genocide. So to be honest, we have no clue what the ending of Attack on Titan will be, but one thing is certain, whatever it is, will be fire. And I certainly hope we eventually get a sequel, though I fear nothing can top the original. Anyway, what do you think? Do you think the ending will change? And if it does, what will happen? Personally, I feel like if the ending does change, it will be that Eren will completely wipe out all of humanity and rule paradise as a king, just as the song Rumbling says he doesn't want to do. I'll bet that Astoria's baby is Eren's because the timing is just too perfect and works out for Eren's goals 100%. 
It's also possible that the baby will also get the Beast Titan, as we know that the Titans who don't possess their powers before death will have their Titan given to a new child that has yet to be born. And the moment that Zeke dies, a new baby pops out of Historia. Another idea is that Eren won't kill everyone and will only hit certain targets and use the Founder as a deterrent, as was the original plan. But what do you think? Tell us below. Help us know you're interested in seeing more videos like this. And when we release said videos, be sure that you have rung the bell to be notified when we drop them. Peace out.